Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah, saints. Oh, our God is King. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. Oh, hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised and lifted up. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Open up our hearts to receive your word today. And let us be blessed therein, Lord. Hallelujah. In your word, by your Holy Spirit, in the precious blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus, holy and most precious, is living blood and operates through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost operates through the blood. Hallelujah. For they are one. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For the life is in the blood. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we pray that you would just crush and demolish every demonic work. Every demonic work in your church, Lord. In the called out, Lord. Hallelujah. And that you would give us all, quicken our eyes that we would see. Quicken us, Lord, in the spirit man, hallelujah, in the innermost part of our being where you dwell in our spirit, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And let us not be deceived any longer, or even a little bit deceived by the workers of darkness, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Now, there's a, there's a popular verse, let me grab my Bible here, because it's very important that you have one. Oh, that's a heavy Bible, because <laughs> God's word is good and heavy. But it's also light. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Hallelujah. You shall find rest under your souls. But you got to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. In 1 Corinthians 13, 9, it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Now, we've had this verse used on us so many times when presenting the truth you, you have to understand the controversy in the earth today is with truth okay absolute truth now Jesus Christ when he walked the earth he spoke the truth okay he did not speculate is this really the truth or is this the truth or is that the truth and when the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost the apostles were filled with the fire of God and they didn't get up there and go oh I wonder if this is what the Lord means or I wonder if that's what the Lord means they prophesied they preached they spoke forth the truth of the Word of God hallelujah okay and in Acts chapter 2 okay now what I want to let me finish up with this verse for we know in part and we prophesy in part now the part that they knew they knew it fully hallelujah okay but we're talking about heavenly things here we're talking about spiritual things here we're talking about principles that God has laid down principles that can be explored principles that can the truths of God that can be uh, explored and and swam in if you will it's like it's like God just imagine all of his truth being being the Pacific Ocean okay and you just dive in all right, you're in his truth. Hallelujah. You have the truth. You're immersed in the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But how big is the Pacific Ocean? See, there's so much there. Hallelujah. That 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 you can look at the scripture like that. See? There's so much truth in here. So much truth. Hallelujah. So much. You can never exhaust it if you live to be 100 years old. Never. You'll find out more and more, but the part when you when you find out a certain part, hallelujah, in your experience not just reading it and getting it up here in your mind, but it, God the Holy Ghost works it in your life. Hallelujah. He works it in experience in your being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? That, that's when it's so awesome. That, that's when it just, it just makes you hungry for more. Hungry for more. Okay? It's not enough to give an intellectual assent okay to the word of the Lord written in the Holy Scripture you have to believe it you have to believe it and when you do you have the truth you have the truth hallelujah hallelujah saints you have it and don't let nobody tell you nay you do have it so when the devil comes in through his uh, his apostles his false apostles his false prophets his false evangelists his false pastors his false teachers okay see the devil mimics everything that's of the Lord see he has all those that he uses, okay, all the cults, okay, they're liars, 
They are liars. That's one thing people do not like to be called is a liar. But a liar is a liar. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. But the apostles on the day of Pentecost, they didn't, uh, they didn't speculate. They did not speculate, people. Praise God. Why are God's people today speculating? Is this what God means? Is that what God means? See, that's the devil's work. Peter said in verse 16 of chapter 2 of Acts, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay? He didn't say, maybe this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Maybe it was. See, that, that's a prophecy in Joel that's being fulfilled. It was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, and it is fulfilled today, and it is being fulfilled today. Because some of you, maybe by this message that you're hearing right now, will get filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and begin to speak with other tongues, hallelujah, if God gives you that gift. Or maybe He'll give you another gift, or maybe He'll give you another gift. You can read about the gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? But God, really and truly, in His whole purpose and who He is, He wants to give us all the gifts. He wants all the gifts of the Holy Ghost to operate in us and through us. So that He can use us at any time, anywhere, any place. Hallelujah. So we can stomp on the devil's lies. See? People are deceived by the devil. The devil is the one deceiving people. It says in 2 Corinthians. Okay? He's pulled a, a, he's pulled a shade over their eyes. A blinders. They can't see the glorious light of the gospel in the face of Jesus Christ. And most people, all they can see is legalism and do's and don'ts and all this stuff. No! We walk by the Spirit of God. We're led forth by His Spirit. We will not be stopped. The devil won't stop us. Now, we got a message from a man. I'm not going to tell you who it is. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to read the last part of it. He says, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that tonight, my Spirit said for me to tell you to dust off your feet and get back to shepherding your flock. Okay. Get back to shepherding your flock. He's talking about the whole thing with Boshoff and the false teachers on YouTube. Okay? In the church. Now, I'm going to get to what he said here. I'll read it again. But I want to say this. Now, I want you to understand something. Alright? I want you to put yourself back in the year 45 AD. After the resurrection of Christ, it's about 8 years, 7 years, 9 years later, 10 years. Let's just say 10 years later. Okay? Put yourself there with Peter and John and James and, and, and some of the evangelists that the Lord had raised up and some of the other men and women of God. Maybe Mary Magdalene was there. Uh, and, and there's all the, 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 the church, the flock, the, sh the, sh the, the flock of God, the sheep. They're all gathered together. And just imagine someone walks in and says, uh, you know, you really don't need those Old Testament scriptures. You don't need the scripture to do what God wants you to do. You don't even need to read them. Just listen to the voice that's speaking to you. What do you believe and think that those apostles would have done to such a person like that? They would have cast the devil out of them. They would have cast the devil. They would have recognized that spirit right away. You see. And there was another case in the scripture where Paul is preaching. Paul, the apostle, he was Saul. He was a very zealous and jealous man for the Lord. He loved the Lord. Paul did. But he loved him on the wrong side. Hallelujah. Okay. On the legalism side. And many out there today, they love the Lord. They say they profess they love God. But they're loving him on the wrong side. They're working for Satan. They're working for Satan. And they don't even know it. Because they're blinded by Satan. Because they don't hold the truth in righteousness. They don't hold the truth in righteousness. See, they hold it in unrighteousness. They make it what they want it to be. We don't do that here at Soldiers of the Cross Ministry. We preach the truth of the gospel. We are sure about what we're saying. We know it's the truth. And if you receive it, you will be blessed. If you don't receive it, if you try to deter us, that, you know, even that in itself is, is a good thing, I guess, because it makes us fired up to preach the truth even more. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why are people all fired up about the Super Bowl? All fired up about the, you know, the Final Four? They, they scream and they holler at these stupid games. But we can't raise our voice and triumph over the devil because the gates of hell shall not prevail 
against the called out ones, the ecclesia of God. Hallelujah. We are the conquerors, hallelujah, in this earth. We are the ones with the dominion, saints. Not the stinking devil and not his crowd. And if people want to be willing vessels, willing vessels for the devil, God says, okay, that's your business. You want to be a willing vessel for the devil? Go right ahead. I mean, the devil will give you lots of money. He'll give you lots of fame. He'll give you all the stuff you want. But in the end, he says, now, it's time for you to take your last breath, and your soul belongs to me. Come on. I got a nice little dungeon built for you down in the pit of hell. Okay? And that's where you're going if you don't repent of your sin and believe the truth of the gospel. But Jesus said in John 14, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. See, a mansion in heaven. It's, it's really not even a mansion. It's a room in our Father's house. Hallelujah. Can you imagine how big the room is? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, it's bigger than the Gaylord house. I went into the Gaylord house in Oklahoma when I worked for a piano company. And I'm going to tell you something. They, they got a huge house. I mean, these people own the Oklahoma newspaper and Daily Oklahoma. And they're, they're multi, multi-millionaires, okay? And they have this huge house. I mean, whoo, man. Had a big old giant bed hanging from the from the from the roof. I mean, it was just huge, big giant forty foot windows and a huge house. But the the room God has for you when you're born again and filled with the Spirit of God is bigger than that. It's bigger than that, saints. It's huge. It's it's humongous. It's it's more than. I mean, He knows exactly what you love. He knows exactly what you want. What will please you? God does. But you got to come to God. you got to come to God and say, Lord, show me your desires. Give me your desires for me, Lord. Hallelujah. Put them in my heart. Hallelujah. And then he'll put those desires in your heart. Hallelujah. And then you start praying them in. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is so good to give us a word. He's so good to give us a word. You know, I plan. I, sometimes I try to plan my day. You know what I mean? You ever do that? You ever say, well, I'm going to do this at 8 o'clock. I'm going to do this at 9 o'clock. You know, that hasn't worked for us in the last month. I mean, it just not has not worked. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost leads us. Hallelujah. You can't make a daily planner. You know, before we, we try to set times like to open up the Pal Talk room or to have this kind of broadcast or that kind of, you know, setting a time, okay, 10. No, it, it never works for John and Sharon. It just doesn't work. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit says, now. He says, now. Stop what you're doing. Do this. Do that. See? And we are led by His Spirit. Hallelujah. And we're moving by His Spirit. Walking in His Spirit. But can you imagine the apostles dealing with someone who comes in and they, they're, they're just totally 180 degrees opposite of the revelation of Christ. Opposite. You think they're just going to sit there and just let them put their filth on those sheep? I'll tell you a story Smith Wigglesworth. It was told that he was having a meeting. And in the back of the room, there were a bunch of spiritists, a bunch of devil, python-filled people praying in the back of the room. And the Holy Ghost wasn't coming down. And Smith was praying, what's going on, Lord? What's going on? And the Lord showed him. There's some witches sitting in the back of the room. There's some soothsayers back there, some diviners back there. So he just walked around the church, and, and he just was just praying in tongues and just walking around. When he got to their bench, it said that he lifted up the bench and he picked it up and said, Out, you devils! And he threw them out of the meeting. And the Holy Ghost came down. Where are the men and women of God who will stand up? Hallelujah! And be the salt and be the light. Oh, but the light's too bright or it's too loud. You don't like it. That's all right. That's all right. Don't like it. When you get to heaven, you think there's going to be just soft music playing. Oh, and it's going to be all the angels, they're going to have harps. Well, the, the Bible says they, they, all, they had harps. Yeah, but how's that going to sound like we think of a harp today? What, what do you think it's going to sound like when God sings over you? Hallelujah. I mean, God, he says in his word in Zephaniah chapter 3, he says he sings over us. Hallelujah. Oh, he's singing over us. He dwells in the midst of us. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a holy God, saints. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He wants you to know the truth. And when you know that part of the truth, you know it. You know it by experience. He'll work it into your life. Pray. Father, I pray you work your truth 
by experience into the life of your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where it won't just be an intellectual thing, all oh, they know this, but let them sense it. Let them, let them have it deep in their spirit, man. Hallelujah. And know you, Lord, even more. Know you even more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll finish up with this. I want to take you right here. Acts chapter 13. You know, Paul, he's talking. He, he went to... Uh, he went over to this island, okay? So they being sent forth, verse 4, 13, 4 of Acts, by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. Now, now, what do you think they read in there? Do you think they just kind of just, they just kind of went, hum? Holy Ghost, give me a word right now for these people. No. Paul rolled out the scroll. He got to Isaiah 52, 53, and he started reading the scripture. And then he said, let me tell you, today, this is fulfilled today. Hallelujah. This word has been fulfilled in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. Now, Paul didn't use the word Jesus because the letter J wasn't invented yet. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. But since the letter J is invented now and they, they have written down and translated into English and it's Jesus from Jesus in the Greek, okay, then uh, praise the Lord, I can call him Jesus. Hallelujah. And I know that Jesus I'm talking to. He's the one at the Father's right hand. Glory to God. Oh, praise God. The one who rose from the dead. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul was preaching, okay. And when they came to Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their ministry. And Paul today, he still has John to his ministry. Hallelujah. He's looking right at you. Praise God. I'm going to minister the words of the Holy Ghost through my big brother, the Apostle Paul. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer. They found a certain sorcerer. Okay? A false prophet. Now see, people who are sorcerers and false prophets are not your brother. When are you going to get that? When are you going to come out of the New Age movement, okay, where everybody's one, we're all part of the human race, and we're just all brothers and sisters. No, 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 no. There are two people on this earth, two bodies of people. There's the body of Christ, the triumphant, the filled with God body, the partakers of the divine nature body, and then there is the body of the Antichrist, the devil, filled with hell, filled with self, filled with pride and arrogance and covetousness and lust. Okay? And you can go on and on. You which part of the which body are you in? And some people I think they're universalists. You know, and they, they masquerade as not being a universalist, but they are. Everything's going to be redeemed, you know. All people for all times are going to be uh, born again, and everybody's going to have a resurrection body, and we're all of creation's going to be restored. No, the Bible doesn't teach that. No, 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 no. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Okay, now I'm going to finish up. And when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet. A Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. Oh yeah, he's gonna steal the name of the Lord. Yeah, he probably, he probably, the Spirit probably told him, "Call yourself Bar Jesus," like the Spirit with Jan told him, "Call yourself Justice." You know what a blasphemy, man. Which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word, of, the word of God. This guy's desiring to hear the word of God. He's the head of this country. He's like the governor, okay? He's the deputy. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, see, this person here that wrote, I believe he's seeking to turn many of you away from the faith by trying to plant poison in my mind to make me stop preaching and teaching what God gives me to preach and teach. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to teach it. The gospel is the truth. Okay? 
the gospel of the kingdom of God hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom of God it entails the gospel of faith the gospel of grace all the gospel of goodness oh and faith and love and oh it's it's all in the gospel of the kingdom see the kingdom is a person and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ do you have him today he said the kingdom of God is within you the kingdom of heaven is within. does he live in your heart today did he give you a new spirit you only get it from him and you only get it by repenting of your sin and believing the gospel you don't get it no other way you can't work for it or anything you have to bow down you have to cut your pride out you have to say Lord cut my pride out my covetousness malice and jealousy and hatred and lies and know that Christ has done the work for you hallelujah so here's this 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 warlock sorcerer okay withstood them then then Saul who also is called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him hallelujah and said oh full of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil that's what he called him. thou enemy of all righteousness wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord now Paul said that to this man he didn't say uh, well this man's our brother to, today the people today would tell Paul Paul you can't say that to him you know I made a video called flee from this reprobate bastard okay see a reprobate is someone who is their mind is is their conscience is totally gone they're reprobate twice dead plucked up by the roots they have no life and a bastard is someone who doesn't receive any correction from the Lord they won't receive instruction from the Lord not that the Lord's not trying to give them instruction they won't receive it they will not receive it they know everything okay and, and I made a video called that flee from this reprobate bastard and it was about Yan Basha because that's what the Lord showed me that he is and it's, it's proven out it is proven out. That was in 2009. Okay? Might have been 2010. No, I think it was 2009. So, long time ago. We have not ceased to tell you over and over again and warn you about false teachers. If you're not receiving the truth, that's your business because of the way that I speak or the way that I look or anything else. God's not going to look at you and go, uh, well... I'm sorry I should have told John to shave his beard off and then maybe you would receive the truth no you're not receiving it because you're full of pride and arrogance and you don't want to receive it you need to ask God to cut that out of your life and the only thing that's going to do it is the Word of God it's a double-edged sword it's going to divide us under between joint and marrow and soul and spirit it's going to reveal what the thoughts and the intents of your heart are and when you find out the thoughts and then your the intents of your heart are all wicked for yourself for your self-aggrandizement you need to repent you need to repent and believe the gospel. Paul called him a child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, man. See, he was in darkness. God just let it be real. God let it be real what he was in. Hallelujah. And there fell on him immediately and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. At the doctrine of the Lord. Hallelujah. The doctrine recorded right in here. The doctrine that Yan Bashaw says is witchcraft. Can you get it? Do you see that? The Holy Spirit told him to say the doctrines derived from the Bible are witchcraft. Then they turn around and come back two weeks later and say, This is what I mean. Preachers use the Bible, blah, 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 blah. No, that was a witchcraft spell that has been broken off the sheep. It was put out there by a sorcerer, a soothsayer, a python, okay, working through Basha. Now, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't believe it, you are not going to be right with God. You want to continue on in the error? You go on in the error. I'm going to shepherd 
God's flock. Hallelujah. Because it's God's flock. It's not my flock. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Jesus. And I belong to Jesus. And I'm part of the flock. And if he tells me, John, I've made you a ram. And I say, okay, Lord, praise God. Where are the rams at today? Where are the rams at today? 